This is a talk uh, I'm going to be doing for the Department of Justice in uh, September for their big IPR push. They're going to be doing uh, intellectual property enforcement throughout the United States, training local and state law enforcement. And uh, I'm going to be doing this talk out there. And uh, I've done this uh, all over North America. Um, this is a pretty stunning talk. Um, check this video out. June, Fox News investigated a group called Muslims of America, a group of Muslims converts with uh, more than 35 suspected communes across this country. A member has been convicted in a multi-million dollar counterfeit goods ring, and now some investigators are questioning whether some of the money was destined for a radical shake in Pakistan, or Catherine Herridge is the one who's been looking into it, and she's in Washington now with uh, more about what we know about the guy who was convicted and the possibility that he is connected uh, to this shake. Catherine? Yeah, Jane, uh, three members of Muslims of America were uh, allegedly linked to this counterfeit goods ring, and according to these court documents obtained by Fox, uh, one of them this month has pled guilty, 51-year-old Ronald Roundtree. This is significant because law enforcement officials say that Muslims of America is connected to a group led by a radical sheikh in Pakistan, Mubarak Jelani. Mubarak Jelani is a name you may know because a couple of years ago, uh, Wall Street Journal reporter Daniel Pearl was on his way to interview Sheikh Jelani when he was uh, abducted and then later murdered Jane. Catherine, what is the group's response and why is the federal government so interested in this case? Well, when we spoke to the group in Red House, Virginia, that's Southwest Virginia, a couple of months ago, they did confirm to us that Ronald Roundtree uh, had been linked to the commune, but they told us that he had been kicked out some time ago for antisocial behavior, and they said that that's what they do with everyone who, uh, in their words, may have broken the law. The reason law enforcement is so interested in this group uh, and this counterfeit goods ring is that some of them believe that money from the counterfeit goods, around $7 million, was in some way funneled to Sheikh Jelani in Pakistan to help him fund his radical ideology. We know from our own investigation that foreign members of the group said that it was well known that elders in the group would carry large amounts of money to Pakistan, in some cases just under $10,000. Catherine Harris for us, uh, NBC. Catherine, thank you. Pretty crazy. This case started out by buying jeans on websites. Counterfeit jeans. Harmless. Completely harmless. All you're doing is buying a pair of jeans from a website here. And it's a heck of a lot less than what these companies charge at Macy's or wherever else. Say almost half price. Look at that. Okay. These websites. These three sites. Not apparently linked. They ended up having the same supplier. We made these buys. We found a supplier in New York City. And uh, they went by so many different names that all the names have to appear on the sign. Jump International, T-Shirts International. Actually, some of the other names don't even appear here because they went through so many different name changes and things like that. This is a mob-run counterfeiting shop. We buy our jeans. We send an investigator up to this location. We get a business card from a guy who calls himself Abby. Okay, great. Now we know who it is, right? Abby. <laughs> all three numbers. None of them were working. You see it says Jumpwear here, hip hop brand name, that was it, boom. What do we do with this? The <laughs> first thing we do, we start doing some searches. We find three other business names there, Gizmo Wear, T-Shirt Inc, and Jumpwear, which was on the card. Um, next thing, who's Abby? Abby. Here he is. Prisoner number 35338054 out in Pennsylvania. This guy was running his entire operation from prison. And you know, every time we sent an investigator to that location, the investigator came back with a business card from Abby, except each person who called themselves Abby was a different person. <laughs> Uh, this, is, this is happening in, in every, every, probably every prison in the United States. There's somebody running an operation from the inside. And that's what Abbas Shul, uh, Schumann was doing. Um, now, his partner was a guy named Ronald Roundtree, which we discovered through our investigation. Where was Ronald Roundtree? We start looking for him. He's in the Catskills in New York. 
who lives up there? You know, I mean, there's there's something. You know, these are like summer homes. You know, I mean, winter homes and all this kind of stuff up there. What's 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 in the Catskills? Is Lomberg. This is Al Fukra's headquarters. Al Fukra is a an alleged terrorist organization that um, goes by Muslims of America, which was incorporated in the early 80s in the United States. They own a lot of property out there, tons of land. This is a machine gun house right here where, there, where there's a live guard at all times. This is one of the property rolls just to show you. Muslims of America's Inc. R Roods Creek Road, which is where most of the property is located. This is a very desolate area. And what a lot of these guys, this whole Islamberg group, uh, they say that it's a hippie commune. Kind of like the whole David Koresh thing, you know. We have a lot of guns and all this kind of stuff. I know you hear a lot of guns, a lot of military training out here, but we're just a bunch of hippies. Um, Sheikh Jalani. He's the guy. Now, he's, he's the guy who many people suspect is the guy funneling money to and from the Lebanese mafia, the United States, through Pakistan, into Beirut. A lot of guys funnel the money directly to Beirut through uh, Western Union. But um, this guy right here, he was the one that, do you remember Daniel Pearl back in 2002? Very, very, either late 2001, early 2002. Daniel Pearl, he was, a, he was a newspaper reporter who went to interview Sheikh Jalani. And when he got there, he was beheaded and made an example out of. And his beheading was actually distributed virally online. It was one of the first viral videos. Um, but this is Sheikh Jalani, nice guy. Tale of Two Cities. This is a Tale of Two Cities Dickens never told. Richmond, Virginia. Now you notice in the, in the broadcast, they said they were looking for Ronald Roundtree down in Red Roof, Virginia, or Red House, Virginia, just outside of Richmond. We find this location called Big EZ. This is the supplier for Jump International up in New York, another related company. This location, a little nondescript warehouse out there in inner city there in Richmond. The Red House. There are only two Al Fukra camps in the United States that we know of. They're in northern New York, or upstate New York, and Red House, Virginia, just a few miles out of, out of uh, Richmond. And this is, this is the location, the Islongberg location, where they were actually looking for Roundtree, even though we had located him up in New York at the time. Um, this ended up becoming a huge DOJ case. Uh, they located seven million dollars just from one UPS account. Look at this. Oh no, I'm sorry. Nineteen million dollars in COD payments just to one UPS account. And we saw, we saw four business names that we know of. And potentially there were four UPS accounts. You know, imagine. Nineteen million dollars. This was just from one UPS account between those two years that were funneled to Jelani. Um, this here is something that just blows my mind. Every time I do this, I just get chills. That Fox News broadcast was not just a Fox News broadcast. It was clipped by Al Fukra and it was turned into a commercial. This is what it showed in the beginning. Cyber Jihad 101, we will not submit. And then this is what it showed in the very end. If you saw that, the end card was to learn more about Islamberg. They turned their own arrests into commercials. That's crazy. Um, and you know, these terrorist networks, this is actually just from USA Today. They had a really nice uh, chart printed, maybe, I guess they put this out maybe about four or five years ago. But it's a nice example of, uh, and you can Google it online, just USA Today terrorist networks. But um, I like using this because it's very clear, uh, uh, of, you know, a very clear depiction of what can be confusing, where they kind of list the different cities and things like that. And you see the Al Fruker locations right here, boom, and boom. Um, yeah, so that one is, that's a talk that I'm doing. I was invited out to, um, to give this for um, the DOJ.